Camera companies have been making cameras for nearly 200 years. There have been some hits, and there have been some Diana Fs. But for my money, the Nikon FM2 is one of the best cameras ever made. Welcome back to Overexposed. Let's talk a little bit about the history of the Nikon FM2. So the story began back in 1977, just like the original Star Wars, with the release of the Nikon FM. It would remain remarkably unchanged until the release of the Nikon FM2. Although in 2022, the camera seemed to have incredible build quality, the camera was actually designed to sit in the middle of Nikon's professional range. And even for the time when it was released, it featured technology more appropriate for the Beatles era, not for prints and read any review or any description of the camera. And the hallmark feature of the Nikon FM2 was that titanium shutter. That shutter was gonna allow the camera to achieve really high shutter speeds and also last for a really long time. It's easy for us to forget that in a world where cameras last two or 300,000 uh, shutter clicks, the cameras at one point only made it 50 or 100,000 clicks. By the time that Nikon released the FM2 back in 1982, most camera manufacturers had moved to almost all automatic everything. Releasing an all-manual camera was a little bit of a risk. The camera remained steadfast in its simplicity and bucked the trend of moving to all automatic everything. I mean, look at this camera. There are no electronics anywhere except for the built-in lightning, and the camera works just fine without it. All that's to say that the camera was a little bit like Greta Van Fleet, consciously retro from the start. Unlike Greta Van Fleet, though, this camera seems to have ascended all the way to legendary status, despite its lack of innovation. After doing extensive research, and by that I mean watching a couple of YouTube videos, I decided to buy my very own Nikon FM2. I bought this camera off of eBay almost a year ago from a gentleman in Hawaii. It came, it came with the body and also the 50mm 1.4 lens that you see right here. While I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico on my New Year's trip, I also bought a 35 2.8 lens. When I bought the camera, it was the only 35mm film camera that I owned. Full disclosure here, guys, I wanted a good-looking, reliable 35mm camera that would fit in my briefcase. And because I already owned enough film cameras to satisfy the DSM requirements for an addiction, I wasn't really looking to spend all that much cash. And, and, and that's what led me to the FM2. Looking at the dimensions of the camera, it's 540 grams, which is a lot of meth, but really isn't that much for a camera. That's about 19 ounces if you prefer your football oblong. In addition to that, the camera has a very small footprint as well. It's 5.4 inches long way, 3.5 inches tall, 2.5 inches front to back. It's almost as small as the cat hairs that adorn my clothing. I mean, it's a really small camera. I mean, I really don't want to oversell it, but the handling of this camera is perhaps the best of any camera that I've ever used. It's like Nikon tapped into Plato's world of ideal forms and figured out exactly what a film camera should be and then they distilled it down to this camera right here. I mean, the thing just works. Everything works exactly how you think it should. On the top, you've got a combo dial, shutter speed and film speed, and next to that, you have a threaded shutter speed dial on the right, and then a film rewind on the left. You will obviously control the aperture on the lens, and then you have a big and bright viewfinder on the back. Look inside, and you'll give the shutter a little half press, and no, that's not a weird Tiger Electronics game in there, but it's your light meter and the functions of that. When your light meter reads that you have a circle, that means that you're bang on. If it's plus, it means that you're overexposed, much like this channel. And if it's minus, it means it's underexposed. There's a focusing patch in the center. Just line the images up and your photo should be in focus. And to turn the camera on, you're gonna pull back the film advance lever, and then it's ready to go. Let's talk for a minute about build quality. It's not like a build quality, but it's also not in another universe either. The camera is mostly made of metal, like the Terminator with a little bit of plastic here and there, but nowhere super important. And if you're super bougie, there's also a titanium version out there that is a beautiful and pleasant champagne gold. The chassis of this camera is tried and true, remaining basically unchanged for years across Nikon's professional range. Everything about this camera feels tight and really well put together. I mean, it's a Nikon, and by that, I mean it's great. If you're even vaguely careful with this camera, it's gonna outlast you by quite some margin. Let's talk about some of the main features of this camera. As I talked about earlier, the camera featured a titanium shutter, which was novel at the time. I don't know that it was ever done before. And that allowed the camera to achieve really high shutter speeds up to one four thousandth of a second, which was, for the time, amazing. Problems in the, apparently the titanium shutter had problems in the cold weather, much like me. Early cameras could achieve a flash sync speed of one two hundredth of a second, later models upping that to one two hundred fiftieth of a second. As we talked a little bit about earlier, the camera features a built-in light meter that's 
fairly darn accurate and, and it's reasonably simple to use. And I just found this out during the review. You can also see your shutter speed on the left side of the viewfinder. Because I'm not very observant, I just never saw that. But it's there. There aren't really that much in the way of specialized features here. It's a fairly un uncomplicated camera. What lenses are available for the Nikon FM2? I think it's easier to talk about what lenses aren't available. I mean, this is fitted with a Nikon F mount. That does include the caveat that there's some weirdness with the later G lenses. You don't have the ability to control the aperture because they don't have a built-in aperture ring. You know, obviously looking at this camera, you lose autofocus capabilities, but the lenses will work. But those lenses will work for the most part, provided they have an aperture ring. The 8mm 2.8 fisheye lens that you've been craving, or that 800mm tiger spotting lens. Lens selection for the FM2 is perhaps the best of any camera system. We should probably talk about price, and while these things are still relatively inexpensive in the world of film photography, they are creeping up. I mean, I can remember when these things could be had for as near as makes no difference, $100. Finding one for less than $300 in pretty good condition is tough these days. And if the camera is in really good condition, you may be looking at more like $400. I mean, it stands to reason that if you want one in better condition, you're gonna have to pay a little bit more. And what would a camera review be without a few images that I've taken with the camera? Here are some of my favorites. I've put a few rolls through my Nikon FM2. I admit I'm more of a 120 shooter than a 35 millimeter shooter, so I didn't have a huge pool to draw from. The lens quality and the camera quality of Nikon can't be questioned, and I think the images are just, just as good as anything that you get on 35 millimeter in any system that you use. Now we're at that part of the review where we start to talk about the drawback, and there are a few. First and foremost, I tried to use the camera for selfies, and it just doesn't work. Also, the camera is a fully manual camera, so, and also the camera is a fully manual camera. And if that's not something you're looking for, then you're going to want to step right on by this one. Every setting needs to be adjusted, your lens needs to be focused. If you're looking for fancy computers or electronic motors, this is not the camera for you. Additionally, for an all manual camera, these don't represent the value proposition they may have once did. Price is becoming quite a barrier to buying one of these, and I expect as more and more people turn to film, the process of these things are going to continue to come up. So look at it as an investment. Maybe we need a knock on FM2 mutual fund. And in my experience, I found that the meter tends to overexpose slightly. And unless that's the look you're after, you're going to have to compensate for that. What is there to say about the knock on FM2? I'm not going to mince words here. This is the best 35 millimeter film camera that I've ever used. From the simple and elegant controls to the small and compact form factor to the fantastic build quality, the camera is pretty darn perfect. I've, I've spent a lot of time talking to you guys about why the Nikon FM2 slaps. I love mine and I'm actually considering grabbing a second copy to have on standby. As the film industry continues to bounce back, the prices of these cameras are only going to go up. So friends, there's no time like the present to grab yourself a Nikon FM2 and shoot it until the cows come home. For years, these cameras were used by professionals and amateurs alike to create exceptional images. So I fully expect that this camera will be good enough for you and me. Grab yourself a knock on FM2 before it's too late. I promise you won't regret it. Check out this video of me taking my knock on FM2 on an adventure. Nikon FM2